The following program is intended for mature audiences. The time is now for the hardest hit, yet completely trivial, football show on the planet. You are in rarefied territory. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well to the broken helmet. Let's rock. And coming to you live on tape on this October 13th, 2021. Recording at about 5.15 in the afternoon. Rich Eggy hailing from the great state of New Jersey. Christopher Eggy hailing from the great state of New Jersey, but has since moved down to the sunny, sunshine state of Florida. And it's been a big week in the NFL over the past 48, 72 hours, maybe longer, if you want to go back to when the story originally broke on Friday. But, Christopher, you are in search of a new head coach. Congratulations for getting out from under that hefty hundred million dollar contract yeah uh, oh man screaming in the microphone let me turn that down a little bit now the yeah zero. i don't know i who cares i i've moved past it uh, the raiders are on a two-game losing streak i i john gruden is john gruden he i'm not defending his actions but i'm sure there's millions of emails out there in the world that would get a lot of people in trouble. Yeah, I I have been working on putting my thoughts together for a podcast that I was actually going to do after Friday because when the initial story broke uh, with his DeMora Smith comments, I I mean, basically, it was over. I mean, that, that, that was it. I, I didn't see how he was going to survive that one. I mean, he he could try to spin it all he wants, but I mean, what he said uh, with with a football team made you know with a majority of black players, I, I don't know how you got out of it, but he did. He did. That guy somehow got out of it for about forty eight hours, and to the effect that on Sunday night for the Sunday night football game, Mike Tarico was there backing him up because he was his broadcast partner for Monday Night Football for all those years. And it looked that come Monday, uh, you were going to be stuck with Chucky and that $100 million deal. And there was no way to get out of it. And then all of a sudden, oh man, forget about it. The next emails came, and there you go. So uh, they kind of blasted everybody. I mean, if it wasn't one group, it was the next, and then the next, and then the next. And now the Raiders are in search of their new head coach. But outside of the comments, I, you know, like I said, I'm going to do a podcast myself on that, but let's not bog it down here. Um, you got to be a little excited, right? I mean, Chucky didn't really do anything for you. I don't know. I, it really depends on how you look at it. If, you know, he did have a relationship. The biggest thing I keep hearing about is the relationship with him and Carr. How's Carr going to do without him? Hopefully, Mayock gets a new quarterback because as average as Carr is, we're not going to make it to the promised land with him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, tell me something that I don't know, motherfucker. Uh, come yeah, on. so. I mean, I, he, Gruden didn't I, really I liked, do anything. I liked, you I liked him? I, Why? I didn't, because, well, he didn't hurt the team. He didn't help the team, but he didn't hurt the team. Didn't hurt the team, fine. But, I, I mean, seriously, uh, what did he do to help? I mean, uh, if anything, yeah. I mean, it was like 500, right? I mean, you didn't get anything. You didn't lose anything. You probably no, blew they- a ton of draft picks on guys, like you said, that he just falls in love with. And like a fantasy football draft just grabs whenever because they want them. It's exactly, exactly what happens. Him and Mayock just, they fall in love with someone. They overdraft them with the fear that they're not going to be able to get them in the second or third round. And I mean, just, I mean our picks are terrible. Our, our dra- We do not know how to draft. We need to like hire someone who knows how to draft. But that's neither here nor there. I what would think on more, that fact alone you would be excited about the, the firing. 
Dude, the Raiders have been bad for 30 years. Yeah, I, I understand that. I, I get it, but... The, do you know how many coaches we've gone through? The, the, I, I mean, I do for sure. You know, I mean, yeah. when I was growing up, I still remember. Uh, uh, God, I, I can't remember his name. Um, Art Shell? Nah, even before Art Shell. I mean, I remember Art Shell, right? I mean, they even brought Art Shell back. <laughs> That's I know great. they brought Art Shell back. He wasn't good the first time around, and they tried to uh, go back to the well. In that. Jesus, talk we about, had Gruden, talk Tom about retreads. Kid. No, even before those guys. Who was the guy? Flores, the guy that actually won. Didn't he win the Super Bowl for you? Mm, Tom Flores? No, Madden. Madden? No, after that. Tom Flores. Uh, no, we haven't won a Super Bowl since since 83. Uh, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't him, though. Madden was in 83. Are you sure about that? I, I thought it was. I could be wrong. I, uh, I I mean I was a year old, so I don't I don't really remember to the T, but Yeah, so as a coach, Oakland Raiders seventy two to seventy eight. No, it was Flores. It was Flores, Tom Flores. Here it is. Oakland, Los Angeles Raiders, seventy nine to eighty seven, and you guys won it in eighty two. In eighty two, right. Right. So it was Wait, Tom Flores. But so... that's what I'm saying. I, I like I remember all the way back. That far, so it's. I'm just saying. Yeah, there's been a lot of coaches. I remember a lot of them, um, but you know, Chucky was supposed to be the captain that steered the ship to you know better days. And I mean, looking at your draft picks alone, it's been. I mean, brutal. I mean, the last last three years, right? Leatherwood, Morig, Koontz. Day Bowl, that those are your first three rounds this year. Rugs, Arnett, Arnett just got hurt two weeks ago. Bowden, Edwards, Muse, the year before that, Farrell, Jacobs, Abram, Mullen, Crosby, uh year before that, Miller, PJ Hole, Brandon Parker. I mean, come on. Holy Jesus. They're horrible. Yeah. I, I think I, I mean they they all play, but it's not like they play good. No, they're just players. But, I mean, if you were to look and say, okay, let's take the, our, our first rounders from the past four years. You're looking at Leatherwood, Ruggs, Arnett, Farrell, Jacobs, eh, maybe. Abram, eh, maybe. Abram's um, good. Miller, I mean, forget it. Forget it. Colton Miller. Anyway, point being, I thought you'd be more excited, but I get it. You know, I, I mean, it was neither here nor there. I, I guess he gave you guys a little bit of personality, you know, while it was there. But I, it's just it's tough to be excited about anything that they're doing when they just they just lost two in a row. You know, like we yeah. lost to the Bears. Like we <laughs> lost to the Bears. Yeah, I, I mean, as a Giant fan, I feel exactly how you do because. You know, you, you get this one fluky win versus the Saints, and then you just know that they're going to get thumped the next week. And then on top of getting thumped by the Cowboys, they lose everybody in the process. So it's just after a while, you, you don't really care. Depending on what kind of fan you are, you, a lot of fans just don't simply care about all that kind of other shit. All they want is to watch their team on Sunday and watch them win. Get the win, and then cheers to the team for giving me some kind of solid entertainment on Sunday. But, uh, you know, un unfortunately, you know, that doesn't happen for some of us, and then you get bogged down with all the kind of other shit. So, uh, Yeah. Although I just saw that the Schefter got pulled into the whole thing, not with the racial aspect of it, but I guess he got called out because he was sending emails to Bruce Allen, then president of the Redskins, for kind of final approval on the story before he, he shipped it to ESPN. Which, you know, journal journalistic integrity. Sorry, not there. Hey, I'm writing a story about you guys, but hey, why don't you review it and let me know what you think before I publish that shit. You didn't Wait, see that? but it wasn't about Bruce Allen. No, 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 no. The story I'm talking about is that Schefter got pulled into this whole thing, right? Because they've got this treasure trove of emails that they've only released a couple of. But I guess one of them that somebody saw was an email from Schefter to Allen that basically gave him the story that 
Schefter was going to run and asked Allen to look it over and tell him if there's anything that he should include or he missed. Right, he missed or, or mm-hmm. shouldn't include. Basically, a reporter going to you know the sources and being like, "Hey, make sure that uh, you know this is to your liking." Which <laughs> again, it, it takes journalistic integrity and flushes it down the toilet. Right, goes right down the sewer drain <laughs> when you start doing that. But then again, not that it, people didn't know that kind of stuff. Anyway, that, that, yeah, I, I know he's he still the Schefter still owns the world. It, it, he just he is the man when it comes. Yeah, to you're the not NFL. gonna you're not gonna knock him off his off of his uh, podium. No, I mean that that's no. You know he he's got that pretty much locked down. But uh, it was just funny to see because look, like you said, there are probably plenty of emails around the world that would put everybody into a bad light. It's part of the my ultimate take at the end, but um, yeah, I mean they've got six hundred at least six hundred and fifty thousand from the audit alone of the Redskins. So if they wanted to go and audit all of the leagues, who knows what else was said, right? I mean, let's be honest. That's the only thing to me that's comical about this whole situation. It's so selective, so selective. I, I don't even pay attention. I don't care. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Good talking to you. I'm glad you can contribute there. Let's just jump right into it. Thanks a lot, Chris. That was awesome. First down. First down. Okay. So let's go to where uh, I know I can get you to contribute here, and that is the gambling aspect of it. So last week, Chris knocked it out of the park. I mean, it was nothing but winners. From Mr. Eggy. So please do tell, where do you stand now in our money, a bankroll contest? Uh, I am up to around 3285, and I have somehow won, I believe, five money line parlays. Or four money line parlays? You've been keeping track of that uh, at a granular level. I have not. I just know that you won constantly. You last week you hit your money line parlay: Eagles, Titans, Bills. That was good. You also put a hundred on the Titans alone. That was good. You had a teaser that included the Eagles, Titans, Bills, and then you threw the Ravens in, and they came back and won. So that netted you another win. And then you came really close with the Pats, Bucks, Chargers, but then the Vikings mm. whiffed. So you were on fire. Fire. By a half a point. I lost that by a half a point. So close. So, so close. I mean, it was ridiculous. So, uh, you ended up uh, pushing your bankroll from around 2600 up to 3200 I think, is what you were saying. So Yeah, around 30, or 32, 33. Right. And as for me, I only had one teaser on the line, and that was the Patriots and Cowboys. Everything teased down. I put 300 on that. And then the Patriots. Pay- Patri- the, uh, the Patriots, the Patriots, the Patriots ended up pushing. They were losing, and I was like, I can't believe it. I'm going to have to repop my bankroll. And then they had a miraculous come from behind tie. So I, I got my money back, and I, I I couldn't figure it out. I gave myself an extra seventy bucks. So my bankroll's at four fifty down from the original thousand. Uh, so we are on two opposite ends of the spectrum in that one. So. As for the rest of our picks here, you your super picks were on the money. Five and O. Oh. You had the Rams, the Bucks, the Titans, Cards, and Chargers. I was two and three. My only winners were the Falcons and the Chargers. So on the year, that brings us to you being over 500 now at 15 and 11 and me ugh it is ugly it is smelly putrid i am 7 and 18 it is how not to pick you want shitty picks you listen to my picks and you put them in the book you want winners i would say side with my brother so the big game which is us picking all of the games themselves not just our top 5 the results from last week are in, and they had Chris at nine and six, and me at seven and eight. So on the year now, Chris, you are thirty-six and forty-one. I am thirty-three and forty-four. We are both 
under 500. The over and unders that we pick each week, we were 0 2 each there. So I am 4 and 6. You are 5 and 5. You're just even 500. And then we always have our survivor and knockout picks. You survived with your Vikings and you knocked out the Dolphins. Both were correct. So you were two for two. I joined you with the survivor pick of the Vikings. That was good. I tried to pick the Bills to get knocked out by the Chiefs, and I couldn't be more wrong. And so I got my first loss of the knockout pool last week. I think I had a survivor knockout the week before that. But uh, And so that was kind of the wrap-up. Now, as for all of the stats, uh, dogs, and favorites... You want to take a guess as who won last week? Oh, the favorites must have won, right? They did. They were nine and six. So the favorites won last yeah. week, nine to six. Of the six games the dogs won, they won three of them outright. Can you pick those three games off the top of your head without looking at a score sheet? The dogs that won outright. The you should know one right away. Were the Chargers? <laughs> no, come on, mm. man. You picked the Eagles. Oh, yeah, the Eagles, yeah. Yeah, the right. Eagles, Bills, and Bears, right? Yep. The Bills beat the Chiefs, and the Bears ended up. Oh, the Bills were, were underdogs, too, weren't they? They were dogs of the Chiefs, yeah. So the Eagles yeah. the Eagles came back. They he, they won that game versus Darnold, uh, and then the Bears, they won. That they, they didn't have to come back from that one. They were ahead all the time. Overs and unders went in favor of the unders this week, 10-6. to six. As for the teasers, Favorites were ten and four. The dogs were ten and six. If I don't, if the numbers sound off, it's because I don't count any pushes. As for overs, they were eleven and four. So that's where the money was to be had. Unders were an even eight and eight. So on the year, you're still looking good. Although you know the numbers aren't nearly as strong as they were in years past. The teased overs are only at sixty-two percent. Uh, the teased unders are almost uh, they're sixty-six percent, and the favorites and the dogs are both around seventy percent. I mean, all the teases end up being about seventy percent, but it is of note that the overs definitely aren't coming in at as great a clip because they're uh, just barely over sixty percent there. Halftime lead. The last thing we follow. 10 and 5 this week. So the games were a little more interesting than usual. I will give you three chances to pick two of the five. Five teams lost their halftime lead. I'll give you three to get two. Five teams lost their halftime lead. Uh, the, the, uh, the Baltimore game. The Colts. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. There we go. I couldn't screw it up more. Yeah. Yes, Indy was one. Yep, Indy was one. I'm just so used to you always getting this wrong. The Panthers. The Carolina Panthers. Yes, they were another one. So you got one extra yep. one. You got two. So I'll just give you the third one. See if you can get one of the other ones. Uh, the, uh, the Pittsburgh game. Uh, Pittsburgh, the Steelers, they did win. Were they ever behind? Ah, uh, no. So it was the Seattle Seahawks. They were up at half. They lost. The Texans were up at half. They lost to the game I just mentioned versus the Patriots. Carolina that you got. The Cleveland Browns were down to halftime and then came back and won that game. And then, or, or hold on. These are, these are the teams that lost. I'm sorry. Uh, Houston had the lead, they lost. Carolina had the lead, they lost. Browns had the lead, they lost. And then Indy had the lead, and they lost. So those were the five teams. So that's another Thursday night game that the team lost the lead at halftime. I wonder what the statistics are on that. Uh, uh, I feel like that's two weeks in a row. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, because the week before that was the Bengals coming back and, and beating the Jaguars after the Jaguars had that lead. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, you mean, do the Thursday night games have a higher frequency of had halftime leads lost? Yeah. I mean, short week, if there was a short week, week short week, if there was a week, there was a game during the week where you could see a little bit more variance in that regard. One would imagine that it, it probably would be the Thursday game. I don't know. I'm sure. It's, I'm sure somebody knows it, and I'm sure it's out there somewhere. With all the statisticians nowadays, I am sure somebody has a running list of that. But I mean, the idea again, which is why Sean McVay was flipping out that one weekend, was that you get the halftime lead, and then usually you win it. 
uh, not for those five teams this, this week. You know what's crazy is that I, I, I said Cleveland, and I just imagined that they won. Who the hell did Cleveland pl- uh, play again? Chargers. Uh, Chargers, that's right. It was 42. I, I watched I watched that game after the fact. That game was crazy. That, I, well, 45-42? Was that the final? It was pretty awesome. It was yeah, pretty awesome. It was pretty awesome. I mean, you know, the Chargers were lucky in that game because there was a third and something, third and 11, and had the uh, – I, I, think it was late in the game and had the Browns just made the stop on that third down that would have been the game um but the Chargers I mean hey Herbert's good man uh, I mean everybody I, has I, been saying it we've been saying it I, I mean it's hard to deny I wonder if they hit the over in that game I don't know it was probably pretty close right Jesus Christ. yeah I mean whoa it was uh what was it total 80 no yeah 80, 89 80 89 87 89 80, 47, 42, I think. Was it 47, 42? I had it written down somewhere. So 89, you're right. 89 points. Uh, yeah. 89 points. Shh. I mean, that is that is crazy. The they, one, probably du- they probably doubled the over. Uh, the over in that game was 46 and a half. So mm-hmm. not quite, but close. Close. Not quite, close. but close. Um, yeah, I mean, for a team like the, the Browns, who, you know, had a good defense, you know, one of the standouts going into last week, I think they were DVOA three going into the week to give up 40-whatever points is is pretty crazy. Uh, the one thing I did note following the stats, if you follow the movement of the ticket pool and the money, uh, the money did pretty good as the week went on because, uh, you know, based on when we made our picks, they were six and eight, but if you took their picks at game time, they ended up being 9-6-1, and one, and that's because they had a lot of money go in on, on these winners. They were 7-5 and five through the change from earlier in the week when we do our pod to uh, when they kicked off, and that was Atlanta, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Chargers, Houston, Philly, and Chicago. All those teams saw a ton of money come in on them, and that ended up paying off because those teams won. Those five losers, uh, Minnesota, Denver, Giants, San Fran, and the Ravens all saw money come in on them, and they lost. But, I mean, whatever, you're 7-5, and five, two games over 500, especially with the adjustment, and that's a that was a big comeback from being 6-8 and eight on Wednesday to 9-6 and six on Sunday. So, uh, always good to keep track if you subscribe to anything like the Action Network or anywhere else that lets you see how the percentages of the money pool and the ticket total totals are being distributed amongst the favorites and the dogs. So, uh, all right, so that's enough of the gambling and our picks. Let's get into this week. And I, you know, we talked about it before we got on air, but it's pretty pretty simple to think where we're going to go first with this one because there are two good games that really stand out uh, amongst the other ones. And I think we'll start off with the 4 o'clocker first. Second down. Second down. So we will fly out to Cleveland, Ohio, where at 4 o'clock, the Browns will be hosting the Cardinals at First Energy Stadium. Right now, the Browns favored by three in this one. It's a trifecta as well as the Sharps currently are on the Browns, as are the tickets and the money. The tickets are barely on the Browns at 55%, but the money right now heavy on the Browns at 81% in this one. Over under is 49 and a half points. So the question becomes the Cardinals, the lone remaining undefeated team, end up being a dog on the road. And will they be able to overcome that point spread and notch themselves yet another victory and stay undefeated? The Browns, meanwhile, are going to be coming with that highly ranked defense like I said last week they were ranked in at number three DVOA this week they have fallen quite a bit as one would imagine so there's a little bit of a discrepancy but Cleveland's defense comes in at 12 this week they were three last week obviously everything that happened impacted them heavily so who's the new number one well, the number one last week is the same as the number one this week, and that was Buffalo. So Buffalo remains as number one DVOA. Number two remains as, uh, 
Well, we, we got Carolina now as number two, New Orleans as at three. So last week, the defenses of the league were Buffalo, New Orleans, Cleveland, and Carolina. Cleveland got smashed, fell all the way down. Carolina leapfrogged New Orleans. So it's three of last week's four still up there. Cleveland obviously just falls because they got slaughtered. So Buffalo beat Kansas City because they played through a freaking rainstorm. You think? Yeah, yeah. Well, we can get. I mean, we can get to them when we talk about them. But um, I don't know. I I I have a different opinion of Kansas City, but that's just me. Um, and we'll we'll talk about Kansas City when we hit the other games. But so for this game, we've got the Browns and Cardinals facing off. Do you think that the Cardinals can go on the road here and get a a, a win versus that defense? Do you believe the defense of last week or the defense of the week before that? No, I actually think that I I was so impressed with I can't believe I'm even saying this. I I I can't, I'm thoroughly impressed by Baker Mayfield in that offense. Like I I can't believe they proved me wrong. I I, I mean the Chargers covered. I get it. The Chargers are very good. Team. Chargers I believe are Super Bowl contenders, but that's not they're here nor there. We're talking about the Browns. I mean they're playing very I, good right now. I mean that that is for sure. Um, you know, and, and yeah, the char- Chargers are going to be tough to beat. Um, yeah, they're going to be tough out, regardless. I mean, yeah, I thought they. I, I didn't think they were serious after they beat Kansas City, and they they, they just keep playing really, really well. Well, you uh, know, Staley's got Staley's got the team. You know, performing really well. He's got a good approach. Um, you know, I, again, I you know he's heavy on the da- data analytics, which is great because he does pound a lot of the aspects of the game which you have heard much of over the past couple of years, especially for people like Warren Sharp and a lot of the sabermetric guys, you know, where you know he does a ton of play action, a lot of motion, incorporates that in the offense and he gets a lot of big plays because a lot of these guys just get wide open, you know. I, I think Herbert is the blessing the curse because he's doing really well right now. The way that he plays though, you know, it, it he could be error prone. I guess that's my only concern talking about him because he's got a little gunslinger in him. I, I could foresee him, and you can disagree with me, but I can definitely foresee him being an MVP candidate in the next year or so. Like, yeah, for I, sure. I, really think, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I mean, I agree. I agree. I'm not, I'm not trying to shit on him. I'm just saying that, you know, the only thing about him is that he does have a little gunslinger in him. And when you get that, you know, you've seen it over the years. Sometimes it works out and comes up short in big spots. But, I mean, you could say that about a lot of people. So it's kind of a nothing story. Yeah. Um, but, no, I, I mean, the real question now is you were you just said you are impressed with Baker Mayfield and that offense. Um, I don't know. Do you think that that offense – do you think the Cardinals can perform on the road? That's that's going to be question number one, right? Browns at home. Browns good defense. I mean, they got they got hit up last week, but that was on the road. The Cardinals have to go on the road and perform well. You know, they had a little bit of struggles last week, but they won a gritty game. I re- I, I love Cleveland. I think they're the pick this week, man. I think they're they're one of the best bets of the week. I as much as I like Arizona, and I think that their team is pretty good. I don't believe they're a five and zero team. I, I just I. They got really lucky a couple times, and I, I like Cleveland. I think Cleveland has potential, and they're another team. Like, the Cleveland-Baltimore game is going to be awesome. And when is that game? I, I haven't looked at the schedule, but maybe you did. Uh, or you're just saying no, because they're I, in the same division, so they play. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I don't know the exact week, but that's I, – I, I don't know. Like, Baltimore's another team that's really good, too. But for this game, I, I, I like Cleveland. I like Cleveland to end the streak – Murray's banged up from the report I read today. Uh, what's a little more concerning is that both running backs for Cleveland didn't practice today. Now, we'll see Thursday if they yeah, were just that. You know, the Thursday, Friday injury reports are the ones that I'm looking at more than anything else. You know, you, you, you right. get a ton of rest on Wednesdays. You know what I mean? So it's, you know, we do this pod on, on Wednesdays. A lot of information gets revealed by Saturday morning, right? And that's when... The lines, there's, it's like a double edged sword when we do lines on Wednesday because you can get a really good line before all the injury reports come out. And then come Saturday, it turns out 
somebody's actually playing. And well, then my all Patriots of a sudden... pick got screwed. Uh, they, they lost four of their five linemen, you know, two to injury right. and two to COVID. So they were down right. to Andrews at center as the only starter. So, you know. Right, right. But, yeah, um, I hear you. But you, you got to make I, do with what you got, right? So, I, I you know, and I, I'm sure that you've heard. I, I do a I do a recap on Sunday morning with all the injury reports and an update on any of the lines and all the rest of it. But, yeah, yeah there's definitely a difference between Wednesday and and uh, and Sunday. But, hey, you know, you're under the gun here on Wednesday. So, on Wednesday, what are you thinking? Yeah, my money's heavy on Cleveland. Yeah, you know, for me, I, I really wanted to go with the Cardinals here. And because I just I hate giving Baker Mayfield any kind of credit. I thought he was okay last week. You know, I, I almost feel bad now for OBJ because when you watch these games, and I've watched the Browns game now uh, in repeat, I saw a little bit of it while it was going live, and then I watched the game in the condensed form. OBJ is an afterthought. I mean, they don't even think about Beckham. I mean, it is just crazy. I, I just... I was talking to a mutual friend of ours, and I, w- I was going back and forth about OBJ because I have him in a fantasy league, and I just said, what a fall from grace with this guy. Because if you look at the stats that he had for the first three years, the guy was good for 1,400 yards. like 90 catches, 1,400 yards, 8 to 10 touchdowns. And all of a sudden, you know, he has an injury year, he has a lighter year, everything falls apart at the Giants, they get rid of him. He goes to Cleveland, he has like a mediocre 1,000-yard year, and then he's just, I mean, he's vanished. And it's not even a, a matter of him being a head case or anything. When you watch the games, they don't even look for him. I mean, he doesn't even look for him. Last week, David Njoku, they had all those points. It was Njoku who got the 150-plus yards or whatever it was, 180. You know, it's crazy. I don't—we I don't, I, don't, we also don't—we're not in the locker room with him, so we don't, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But all the statistics show that Baker's better without OBJ. Uh, I, I mean, I, I I don't think any quarterback's better without a piece of talent on the field such as Beckham. I, I just can't understand why the okay. Giants were able to figure out how to use him and the Browns can't. It, it, it's just... But look, Stefanski was an offensive guy. He came from the Vikings. He still doesn't use him. So maybe there is something there. Maybe he's just shot. I mean, who knows? Who knows? I don't know. But in in this game, I I'm siding with you. You know, I, I like the Cardinals. I think they've played well. They had that big game in Los Angeles two weeks ago. Um, they won to grind. They won a grinded out game last week versus San Francisco. I just think that the Browns defense. It's going to be a tough task for them to come in there and actually hit on some of these big plays that they've had weeks past, right? The Browns' defense is good. Uh, I know the last week they got lit up and there was some you know, wide-open receivers, but they are a well-disciplined and good defense. And I, I think that it's going to be difficult for the Cardinals to you know, hit stride on the road the way they have uh, you know, weeks past. I mean, they really make it, you know, Murray scrambles, he scrambles, he hits a big play. Scrambles, scrambles, hits a big play. You know, I, I mean, Miles Garrett is, is a different bird. He's uh he's a he's a pretty good defensive end, and I think it's going to be difficult to pull off some of those same kind of plays um, going up against the Browns. So I'm with you here. I, I went with the Browns. Um, you know, I, I hate picking a trifecta game because trifecta games usually go the other way, but that'll adjust as the uh, week goes on. Um, and then 49 and a half. So they're expecting some points. I mean, they're not expecting the 89 from last week, but they're expecting some points in this game. Yeah, I. Listen, I I think that uh, I I think Cleveland's going to come out of this game, and everyone's going to be like Vegas. I wish it was the other way, like right, like this was a perfect game where Cleveland would be getting points, and I would be, and, and I'm sure everybody would be, but I would be hammering Cleveland, like if they were getting points, like maybe three. I, I would love this even more. Yeah, I mean they're not going to give they're not going to give Cleveland points at home, right? I mean they're they're too good to get that. I mean as it is, I mean it's an even game, right? I mean that's it's a coin flip. So uh, both of us are going to be on the Browns on that one, and I don't really have a feel for the over under, so that is not one of my uh, picks as of right now. Um, you know, I mean, it's it seems pretty fair. So, uh, all right, so the second game that we will talk about will be in Baltimore. We're at M&T Bank Stadium. 
the Ravens will be facing off against the Chargers, who just faced the Browns that we just talked about in that game we referenced several times. So the Reverend Ravens, the Reverends, the Ravens are favored by three, and the over/under is 51 and a half points as of right now on Wednesday. Everything is on the Chargers. 93% of the tickets and the money are on the Chargers. So the Ravens pulled one out. They gutted one out here last week at home versus the Colts. Not nearly the team that the Chargers are. Are they going to be able to stick with the Chargers here or maybe the Chargers, you know, overshot their actual potential last week? No. The Chargers did not. Uh, no. The Chargers didn't uh, outshoot their potential. I They, like we were just talking about briefly, they looked very, very good and – they fought off every single punch that the Browns threw at them. And like we were just talking about, the Browns are a pretty good team. Yeah, they're I, solid. I mean, it was a nice the, win. Right. On the other side of this, I Baltimore got really lucky. <laughs> yeah, Really, they did. really lucky. It's part of the game. Really though. lucky. I, I For sure. That's the that's like the old Baltimore indie, you know. We hate you, you hate us. Yeah, that game was that game was crazy. Fun fun money. It was like that an game. old school NFC NFC game, right? I mean, NFC right. usually was was bigger on the uh, on the defense, but right, right. Uh, yeah, that that was terrible fantasy week. Terrible fantasy game. Great fantasy game or terrible fantasy game for me. Terrible, but. The um, Ra- I had Herbert, so I, I was fine with it. Well, you had more than Herbert. You had Herbert, and you had uh, Jonathan Taylor in one league. I had one, yeah. Or uh, 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 what did you you won? You came back and won one league. I was it Taylor and Andrews or Taylor and yeah, it was oh, Taylor and it Brown. It was pay dirt. I had Taylor and Hollywood Brown, uh, and the, yeah. and I had Patrick Queen on IDP. So. I was feeling pretty confident there, but they scored about seventy percent of your points. Last yeah, week. they did. So, but I mean, look, the Ravens got down in that game, and they just stuck around. Look, I'm not a fan of Lamar Jackson. I, I just I don't think he is the pocket passer that I would desire on my team to win a championship. His running ability is fantastic. His scrambling ability is great. He makes things happen when. You know, you're not expecting it. But I don't feel as confident with him sitting back in the pocket just running your typical offense. Now, I mean, obviously the Ravens have accommodated his, uh, you know, his strengths and try to stay from away from his weaknesses, which is why they run that offense the way that they do. I, I There's just parts I don't know, you know, that I'm just not comfortable with. You know, so when they're losing to the Colts, yeah, sure. I think that they could come back and get that win, and they ultimately did. But at the same time, I kind of sit back and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I could see this happening, right? Like, you know, it's just not working. They're they're running Lamar Jackson offense, you know, isn't clicking. And now the other team is getting, you know, chunk yards, big plays, and they're down from, they're you know, they need to come from behind. It was It was positive to see them come from behind because I wouldn't, Attribute the Ravens as a come from behind team. I, I just, you're right. I don't think. That, well, their running scheme is not built to do that, right? Yeah, I just, you know, you're you're down ten points to the Ravens, and I, you know, in the second half, mid third quarter, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't feel comfortable as a fan. I just, I mean, that must have been. Was that the most yards he's ever thrown for? It was a lot. I mean, I you never. I don't know see the. I, I don't know the final stats. Uh, if you have them in front of me, but I, I don't remember what the final stats were. It was like four hundred and forty yards or four hundred and something like that. I, you never see Lamar Jackson throw for. No, that's not his game, right? I mean, no, that's not his game. That was that, that was an incredible. Mark Andrews just yeah, he got blew it. up. I, I saw that. I actually played him in one league, and he had thirty something. I was hoping he had like four less points, and he had close to forty. I think thirty something. He had like forty one points oh, or something. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. It was just but end of the line for me in that game. Mark Andrews. It just shows you though how good like they could be if they threw the ball. If they if they 
did that more often. Yeah, I just don't know if that's Jackson, right? I guess that's the question that I have week in and week out with the Ravens, is that if they need to get that game, can they do it? You watch a game like that, and you're like, oh, yeah, they could do it. But I don't remember, remember he was the year he won MVP. He ran for 1,200 yards, but he also th- he was the leading touchdown. Yeah, it was only two years ago. Uh, <laughs> it was like it was right, know, like in the 90s. It was only two years ago. Yeah, I remember it well because I picked him number one, I think, uh, in your league the year after, which was last draft, and then didn't nearly get the same production. So anyway, I, you know, trying to get back here. So you got the Ravens, their uh, defense, which usually is heralded this year, not so much. They're at 22 DVOA. The Chargers, not uh, good either at 18. The offenses is really where it's at. The Chargers are ranked 7, and the, the Ravens are ranked 9. So, you know, this just becomes the question of who do you think's offense is better, I think. You know, I, I don't know if you can rely on these defenses to come up with a big stop here. I think that the – well, Baltimore has a home field advantage, which kind of matters. After watching that game the other night, they were – the audience was pa- – I mean, it was pumped up. Pumped up. Yeah, sure. And I, that definitely ha- that definitely helps. Numbers are saying that, uh, you know, statisticians, if you want to believe them, data, data analysts, that the home field really doesn't have an impact. Maybe, I don't believe that. May, maybe I, it – I just – well, I mean, it definitely didn't last year, but there were no fans there, right? So the question becomes this year, how, how much does it impact the play on the field, the loud noise within the stadium? Who knows? But uh, how, do you, like, how do you even statistically judge that? That is, that is a mental that, – that, that is a, something inside of somebody's head. Did they actually interview every player? No, after they, they, say, they take the data points, right? So I they, know, I know, I know. You know the, they the do home team versus it. away team, spread right, versus I, I spread, know. you know, et cetera, et cetera. Know, and you, you, you come up with, you know. But a, that's a, a stupid stat because – But that's a stupid stat because you get like a Tampa Bay that goes into Miami and beats them 45-17. to 17. Of course it's not going to show anything, right? What, you're saying Florida team, Florida team? I'm just saying. I just use that game as an example. I don't even know where that game was. A blowout. You go any. You get a really good team going to like the Bills going to the Chiefs. Like, how does that? How is that going to show any data data points based off of that game? It only works for games when, like it. It's. Uh, okay. I know what you're saying. Like, how do you judge the impact that the actual home field has? Correct. If you're not, Correct. you know, one of the players or trying to figure, you would figure that crowd noise would be the biggest one, right? I mean, that, that's right. it's, it's, it's it's the crowd exactly. noise and how it impacts the flow of the game and whether it impacts snaps and offsides and all the rest of it. Right, and how it's actually affected affecting people mentally, not just data points on. Did they get a third down when there was a really loud crowd noise? Like, no, what the hell is that? That's not what it's about. It's about the energy it brings. Go to a college football game and watch every single college football home team beat favorites, best teams in the country because of the stadium they're in. You know yeah, I mean? no, I got you. I'm, I'm with you. I don't think that the home field in this game is really going to play an impact, though. Um, I, I just, I mean, for me... I think that the Ravens uh, you know, played really well last week. The Chargers played really well. They both came from behind and got big victories. I just like the Chargers more in this one. Um, you know, I, I don't. I, I think it's pretty an, a pretty even matchup. I just like the big playability of the Chargers more. And when push comes to shove, I have more faith in Herbert getting the needed score than I do Jackson. Uh, you know, if the Ravens' defense was a little bit better like years past, I'd probably favor them here at home. But it's just not super strong. It, it, it just isn't. And so uh, I'm going to go with the Chargers here on the road. It's probably a, a, a very square pick. Um, you know, and I imagine that when push comes to shove, right now all the money is on the Chargers and the, the tickets are on the Chargers. I imagine a lot of that's going to swing toward the Ravens, and I'd imagine the Sharps end up on the Ravens in the end as well. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I love the Chargers in this game. I think this is I, – I think the, the Ravens are going to be a little tired after on that short week, and 
that was a crazy victory, and I, I, I just think the Chargers are a better team overall. I, like I said before, I think they're Super Bowl contenders. Yeah, and I do think there is something to be said, like you just mentioned, that you just expended a whole ton of energy making this come from behind win, and then you got to go up against a really good team. Uh, although you could probably say the same for the Chargers, right? Because they, you but know. that was back and forth. That was like a punch for punch. Yeah, there's a big there's a big difference. I think I I, I don't know who knows. Yeah, I got you. So we're both going to be in on the Chargers on that one. Fifty one and a half is the over under. Uh, I don't have any kind of uh, feel on that, so I'll be staying away from my two games. And you know, if I thought anything, I probably would say that that's a lot of scoring. 51 and a half for a Ravens team that, you know, w- likes to run the ball and I'm not sure about their big plays, but I probably lean under actually. It's not one of my two game my over under picks, but I'd probably lean under in that one. Oh, it's it is one of my two and I I kind of like the over. I think this is going to be a <laughs> well, I'm glad ti- I think this is going to be real tired defenses. Yeah, I got you. Oh, yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. So just exhausted from playing, and, and maybe they hit it up. All right, well, we'll see. Well, it could be two tired offenses, too. You never know. It plays both ways. So, all right, so those are the two games, and now let's hit off on all of the rest. Third down. Thursday night game, Buccaneers versus the Eagles in Philadelphia. The Buccaneers are the road favorite by seven points. Right now, tickets all over the Bucks at 74%. Slight lean on the money uh, to the Eagles. Sharps in on the Eagles, 52.5 is the over-under. Who are you going to take in this one? <sighs> I'd rather just play the over under in this. I kind of like the over under more than I like the game itself. What are you going to like the over? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you would. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, just that both defenses aren't really that impressive at all. (laughs) No, I I mean, you know, they, they, again, better against the run than the pass. Um, but still, Tampa Bay is all the way down at 17th in defense, and Philadelphia is at 11. But, you know, I, I mean, oddly enough, Philly's a little bit better against the pass than Tampa Bay is. Tampa Bay's 18, Philly is 10. Um, and Philly will need that defense in this game because, I mean, the one thing the Buccaneers have is an offense that just fires on all cylinders at all times. I mean... Brady is yes. just such, uh, I, I, uh, I guess, a cheat code. I hate saying that terminology, but he's seen oh, he's everything. Cheat code. He's he, seen he's cheat everything. Code. So, yeah, there isn't anything he doesn't know. There isn't one defense he's seen that he doesn't. It's just, it's remarkable how good he is. He's going to be an inc- if he ever goes into coaching, he'll, he's going to be such an incredible coach. Well, I'll, um, I'll be honest. I, I took the Eagles not because I think the Eagles are going to win it. I just thought that the seven points might be a little much. I know Brady's got a banged up thumb. Their secondary is still kind of a mess. Uh, you know, I think that seven points on the road on a Thursday night game, short week, maybe the Eagles can stay in this a little bit. Again, I don't think the Bucks are going to lose. The seven is a little bit too much for me, so I took the Eagles. Yeah, I took the Eagles too. I'm thinking Eagles at home. Well, this is kind of why I like the over because I think you're either going to take the Bucks in the under or you're going to take the Eagles in the over, thinking it's more of a shootout. Right, just a shootout. I got you. Right. So both in. I, I, go ahead. Yeah, both in. Both in on the Eagles. Both in on the Eagles on that one. The one o'clock games will start out with the Dolphins in Jacksonville facing off against the Jaguars. Dolphins, the road favorite here by three and a half. The Sharps are in on the Jags. Everything else is pretty even. Over-under is at 47. I took the Jags at home. <laughs> I did, too. I, I don't even know why. It's a, probably the only time all year I'm going to take the Jags, but I, the Dolphins are just, they are horrible. Dolphins are just not a good football team. I, I mean, it, they it's are as simple as that. horrible. And Jacksonville's bad, too, especially their defense. Their defense is next to last uh, at DVOA. But Miami is not much better. I mean, Miami's defense is the better side of the ball, I guess, but not by much. I mean, I feel horrible for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are just 
they should just shut it down for a year. Just well, regroup. it's just going to be a revamp. It's just going to be a redo, right? I mean, they got Lawrence. That's all that matters. They'll take whatever they got. They'll you know get rid of Meyer, and then they'll start fresh. This might be a chance for them to win, though, because I, I don't know what the Dolphins really have. I don't, I don't know what the Dolphins do. I don't know what they do. They have an okay defense, and their offense is just a mess on every angle. So, and, and Tua getting Tua back whenever he comes back is not going to help them. I'm sorry. It, it's just not. They, they need more. So, who's in the lead? We have Jacksonville's 0-5. Detroit is 0-5, too. I forgot about that. Detroit's going to win some games, though. I mean, yeah, Detroit make fun of Jackson. Campbell. <laughs> now he's crying on TV. I'm like, holy shit, buddy. Pull it together. And everybody's like, oh, man, it's okay to cry. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not okay to cry. I'm just saying, you know, you're five games in here. You just started coaching. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Pull it together here. Yeah, it looks like Jacksonville's in the lead for that. Maybe maybe Houston will fall. And the Houston's not going to win too many games. Indianapolis is 1-4. That's crazy. Well, it's just been oh, a rough the go. They're, they're, I mean, they've had a tough schedule, and they, I mean, they played the Rams, they played the Ravens, and they've dealt with injuries out the. You know, they're they're short their best linemen, right? I, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah, I feel bad I for the Colts. They they just they have not had a good year at all, and it's not necessarily their performance on the field. It's just everything else around it: schedules, injuries, the rest. Yeah. 20 point, 20 point differential. There's just a lot of shitty football teams right now. And you can see it because when you look at these games, none of these games are really that good. I mean, they're really not. Speaking of which, we, we really shouldn't spend this much time. We'll, we'll just rip through the rest yeah. of these here. Um, yeah. So you're on the Jags. I'm on the Jags. The next game is in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where the Giants, Sons, Daniel Jones, unless he miraculously comes back from that head injury, uh, are going to be playing the Rams right now. The Rams are 10-point favorites. Tickets and money heavy on the Rams right now, both at over 70%. The over-under is 48. Who are you going to take in this one? My heart says the Giants, but my brain says the Rams. Yeah, I took the Rams as well. I, the 10 points was a lot, and I, I wanted to go, you know, think the sharp route and been like, oh, yeah, the Giants, are, they still have a, a defense that has players on it, and they with a one week of work, Mike Glennon can come in there and perform, and they've got Kadarius Toney who, who still can, uh, you know, get yardage, and blah, 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 blah. And then I just said, no, screw it. I, the Giants are terrible. I'm taking the Rams. So the both of us are in on the Rams in that one. The Colts that we just were talking about are going to be hosting the Texans. The Colts are favored by nine and a half in this one. The Sharps are in on the Colts. The tickets and the money are on the Texans. Uh, money pretty heavy at 77%. Over under on this one is 43. Who are you going to take? Ugh. This is this is another tough game. Who do you like? I'm taking the Texans on this one. Uh, nine and a half is just too many points for me. You know, the, the Texans, I'm not saying that they're putting it together, but I I don't know. They, they're not getting blown out of all these games. I'm not saying that they're playing as good as the Lions, given their talent, but I don't know. I You know, nine and a half, it's just a lot of points for me, especially the Colts team. Like, what has the Colts done to deserve a 10-point lead? A 10-point lead. I, I don't know. I, I really I, – I, you're right, because outside of the – their point differential outside of the forty to nothing loss to the to the Bills is is minus twelve. So they're literally in every game. Uh, I don't know. I, I hate ten point spreads. I don't like either. T- I don't like this game in any way, shape, or form. I, but I guess I'll take Indy. You're taking Indy. I'm taking the Texans. I will say that the forty three points. The over-under, I'm going to take the over in that one. Uh, just because, you know, the Texans have been scoring some points each week. And, uh, you know, the Colts obviously have had chances to put up points. I mean, you get 20, 21, 24, you know, that, that gets you 44 in the over. So that's going to be one of my two picks is the Colts-Texans over at 43. The Chiefs coming off that home loss last week to the Bills are going to be traveling to D.C. to face the Washington football team. And they are going to be home dogs to the Chiefs by seven points. Right now, the Sharps are going to come in on the Washington football team. But everything else is on the Chiefs. Heavy to 86% of the tickets, 81% of the money on the Chiefs. And the over-under is 55.5. So no defense to be had in this game 
at all. So, Tyler Heineke, Heineke, does he keep it close in this one, Chris? Does he keep it within the seven? Does he actually get the I don't, win? I, I think the Chiefs are probably going to win this by 30 points. Wow, look at that. I went the other side. I, I did take the football team. I am not going to bet the Chiefs anymore. Every time I do, they screw me. So I'm done with the Chiefs if it means I'm going to pull against them. I, you know, a, a lighter spread, I would do it. But here we're back to the same shit with the Chiefs. They get these 7 to 10 point leads or uh, spreads and they never cover them. I mean, they never do. So uh, just, no, they don't. You're right. I, I know. I know that we talked about this numerous times through the years. Right. They don't. I, I I like to see what their overall spread is. I never looked that up, but their overall well, record. But I, I I forget what it, whatever it was like two and twelve a couple of weeks ago through the last fourteen. But I, you know, yeah, they're I, I I get it. Just they're coming off a really bad loss. Andy Reid is is out for blood. You damn well know Mahomes wants to prove to the league that they are no. Slouch. Well, here's the Chiefs' problem, and this is my opinion, is that they don't have talent. Like, they've got Pat Mahomes, sure. They've got Kelsey, uh uh-huh, and they've got Tyreek Hill. And then outside of that, CEH is just a guy, right? McCole Hardman, just a guy. Uh, Williams, the the backup running back, just a guy. I Pringle, just a guy. Defense doesn't have any players. You know, Honey Badger, I guess. Chris Jones has barely played this year. Uh, Clark has barely played this year. But I mean, at least on offense, what they used to rely on was just all these big plays and just throwing the ball all over the field. And nobody being able to defend it. And guess what? People have caught up on it. And now it's like, all right, well, who else do you go to? It's like, all right, well, who, that's it. You, you know. There, it, it, it's actually kind of crazy to watch it because I feel like they become one-dimensional. Okay, but don't we say the same thing about Baltimore? Um, I mean, yeah, but because their game is focused on the run versus the pass... It, well, it's the same idea. It's the same concept. Well, yes and no, right? Like, even if you're running the ball... Oh, uh, even if you're running the ball. If you're running the ball... And that is your focus, and you're running your game plan like there. Maybe your potential, your ceiling isn't as high, right? At least point production wise. However, you're not going to get as many of the error plays, incompletions, interceptions. I mean, you're just not, right? And I think the problem when I watch the Chiefs week in and week out now is that it's the same thing. It's the line stinks, there's always pressure, uh, Mahomes is scrambling around. And he's got to try to find these open receivers, and the receivers are like, they're covered. Like, almost, you know. I mean, Hill, he has these big games, but then he's, like, absent. Because yeah, he, listen, he's just they got to they got to the Super Bowl two years in a row. Obviously, you could, you know, going back to the history of this, of this sport, we, we all agree, and you've said it a hundred times, you need a quarterback to franchise, to, to kind of settle your franchise down. And carry it through, like Tom Brady and Peyton sure. Manning, et cetera. So he is their franchise, and just like in the history of the sport, I don't, I can't name the last time a, a Super Bowl team won back to back three times in a row. Um, what was the last team that went to the Super Bowl three years in a row? The Patriots? Uh, no, I don't. Like, I, I don't think so. I think or, it goes all the way back to the Bills, who went four times in a row. Right. So you know, people figure it out. Right, it's everything that teams do, and people think, kind of figure it out. What are we? Gonna, what are they going to do different? What are they going to do to switch that up? And you, you damn well know Andy Reid's doing something to try and figure it out. But hey, I, I, it's not like it's not like they're re- getting blown. Remember, out. Andy Reid got ran out of Philadelphia, right? Yeah, I mean, I An- Andy Reid got ran out of Philadelphia because they had, had enough of them, right? And then he had a, a little renaissance here in. in, in in Kansas City because he got a phenomenal all-world talent at quarterback. Well, he had McNabb. I, I mean, for sure. But even at that, they, I mean, they had some teams. <laughs> they, it wasn't they like they didn't have to, teams. Dude, Philadelphia went to the, to the NFC Championship, what, four years in a row or something like that? I, I like just remember, really good. you know, Philadelphia couldn't get rid of Andy Reid fast enough, and everybody had soured on the guy and was tired of him. And now, you know, he got to some some way being this offensive genius, and everybody wanted to give him a pat on the back. And now this year, you look, and it's kind of like, well, offensive genius, what the hell happened? Because it, it's 
you know, you, your team just doesn't look nearly as good. But anyway, so you're going to take the Chiefs. I'm going to take the Washington football team. The next game is going to be played in Carolina, and that's going to feature the Panthers taking on the Vikings. The Panthers had that awful loss last week versus the Eagles when they were up, and then it was a Sam Darnold special. He just couldn't do anything. I think he had 150 yards at center in 2021. That was pretty pathetic. The Vikings, meanwhile, got that big win, and, you know, I, I mean, Kirk Cousins did everything but punch Mike Zimmer right in the face at the end of that game. That was pretty funny. Did you see that that video, by the way? I, I didn't. I just heard about oh, it. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it, it's great. He does like, how you like that? You know, and he like grabs him and he like he basically like shakes him right in the face and Zimmer like looks like he's just going to crack him and he just, get the fuck off me, dude. What are you doing? Uh, so anyway, the Vikings here are going to be the road favorite. There's a lot of road favorites, by the way, this week. There's nine of them. So we've already rattled off uh, one, two, three, Three, four. This is the fifth one, um, and so the Panthers, home dogs, Vikings favored by one. Sharps on the Vikings. Tickets and money on the Panthers only slightly over under forty six. Who are you taking? Vikings. You're taking the Vikings. I took the Panthers. Uh, I like the Panthers D. Uh, I, I just I still have trouble trusting uh, Kirk Cousins. Dalvin Cook still banged up. Um, I don't know. I shouldn't have any faith in uh, Sam Darnold, but I like the Panthers for some reason. I like that. I just – if McCaffrey plays, I guess it will be a different story. But they they are not did, – did you watch that game at all? Did you see any of yeah, I watched the, that Yeah, I watched the replay because I, I, I liked Carolina, and I kept watching it, and they were up, and I was like, how the hell did they lose that game? And, I, I mean, it was Carolina's fault. Carolina gave that game away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're all in to win this year, so we'll see. I, I, I mean, look, they obviously, the Vegas thinks a lot of the, of Minnesota if they're giving them one-point favorites on the road in Carolina. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think everybody's kind of scared of the, of the Sam Darnold factor. I think that's what's coming up now, is that everybody's like, oh, you know, 3-0, and they were everybody's darling child. You know, oh, Sam Darnold's good and defense is great, and now it's like, well, defense is good, but Sam Darnold's Sam Darnold. So yeah. anyway, we're going to be on opposite ends on that one. The next 1 o'clock game will be the Lions hosting the Bengals. Dan Campbell is going to try not to cry throughout the whole game. This time, the Bengals are going to be road favorites. They are favored by three and a half. The tickets like the Bengals more than the money. They're both on that side, but the money's almost 50-50. The Sharps are going to come in here on the, on the Lions. They're playing hard, so the Sharps are going to take them, and the over-under is 47 and a half. Uh, I, I almost picked the Lions, but then I thought to myself, you know what? I really don't like Goff. Goff is not good, and I love Joe Burrow, so how can I not take Joe Burrow when they're just simply the better team here on the road by three and a half. Oh, is it three and a half now? I, I thought I saw it at four and a half. Um, uh, I like three and a half even better. I'll take three and a half. Oh, you had it at four and a half and you took them at four and a half? Yeah, I thought I saw this afternoon it was that. But yeah, um, I, since he's one of my super picks, I like them. I Unfortunately, they are bad. I, Detroit's just not going to... They're in every game. They just lose. Yes, uh, <laughs> It, 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 I mean, do they do play well, but they end up losing every time. And it's funny every that time. you mentioned that the Bengals are your one of your locks because they're one of mine as well. So we'll both be in on the Bengals on our super pick there, and we're both picking them here at three and a half. The final one o'clock game is going to be an NFC North battle. This one played at Soldier Field, where the Chicago Bears are going to be hosting the Green Bay Packers, who are again a road favorite at four and a half points. And right now the Sharps are going to take the Bears, but the tickets and money heavy on the Packers, 75% for each of those. Over under is 45. Are you going to go Lions, Packers, Bears, oh my? <laughs> uh, I don't know how you could ever pick the Bears, honestly. I like, did. I, I, picked I, the, I picked the Packers. No, yeah, of course. Like I, I just it, This is just such a... This game has such tradition amongst them, and Aaron Rodgers is—he's just too good. That t- that team is way better than I thought they'd be. I thought Aaron Rodgers was going to be garbage, but they are—they're uh, pretty good. And with the emergence of a dual running back threat and Devontae Adams kind of in his prime at this point, like 
Oh, for their sure. Offense is, their offense is tough to stop. I, I'm waiting to see the Justin Fields factor because Justin Fields, uh, you know, was supposed to turn everything around, and I really haven't seen all that much from him. So we're both in on the Packers on that, and that is the conclusion of the 1 o'clock games. The 4 o'clock games have three games this week. We talked about one already. So the two left are the Cowboys on the road in New England. Foxborough, the Patriots will be home dogs. The Cowboys favored by three and a half. Tickets heavy on the Cowboys at 84. Money on the Cowboys at 64%. And the Sharps obviously fly over to the Patriots. This over under is at 51 points. I ended picking the Cowboys in this one. I really want to go with the Patriots, but I couldn't do it because they just had to fight and come from behind to beat the Texans. And here the Cowboys are firing on all cylinders at this point. So I took the Cowboys. Yeah, how are you, how are you how could anybody pick against the Cowboys? Yeah. And they keep they keep giving the Cowboys these 3 3 3 3 and a half, 4 4 and a half point spreads. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. You know, like last week, I that was a lock, and I, you know, here Dallas's offense is four, their defense is six. New England, I, you know, I don't know what their defense obviously is okay at nine, but then their offense slides all the way down to twenty four, and you're going to need to score points here, unless you know Belichick can figure out some way to contain this Cowboy offense. So I took them at three and a half. You took them also at three and a half. Right, that's what you just said. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I agree that their defense is good, but their defense is better when their offense is really good because then teams have to. It's very easy to have a good defense when you're constantly your offense is constantly scoring, right? Yeah. No, no, like I, he, I got you. It, you know what the opponent's going to do. They're going to try and throw the ball. To right, get that's the, ball the and that's the ideology of both sides of the ball complementing each other, right? Complementary right. gameplay. So, right. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, I'm, and I'm souring on the Patriots. I, I had faith that uh, Belichick was going to figure this out, but now two years through the road, you know, it's kind of a rudderless ship, and it looks as though Brady is going to win out on Belichick in this. You know, yeah, the 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 bet. Yeah, the the, the 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 unannounced bet. Yeah, well, whatever it is, you know, who, the the que- the question of who has the bigger dick, it really looks like Tom Brady right now. So the over under in this one is fifty one points. Uh, this is actually going to be another one of my games. I'm taking the under in this one. I thought fifty one was a lot of points for a Patriots team that just simply doesn't score. <laughs> they just don't. So I'm I could be wrong because the Cowboys do like to score, but I mean the one thing the Pats do is, is play okay defense. The Cowboys defense is okay, so I just imagine it's going to be a little bit lower than uh, one is expecting. So with the 51, it's going to be one. Of I just picks. can't. What have the Patriots even scored? They scored 25. They scored 16. They scored 13, 17, yeah, and they, 25. They don't score. So now you're throwing how, 50. How, do you, how are they? They must be thinking, what, 28 to 35? I don't know. I, I can't figure it out, which is why it was one of my two games. So I, Yeah, it should, be, it should be 100% the under on that. The final game at 4 o'clock is the Broncos hosting the Raiders. Broncos favored by 3.5. Tickets and money big on the Broncos, almost at 70% for each of them. The Sharps have not taken a lean, and the over-under is at 44.5. I picked the Broncos. The Raiders, I think, are in trouble going here on out. I don't know what the hell they're going to do. I'm not picking either of them. Well, you have to. <laughs> I I can't pick the Raiders anymore. I'm d- I'm done. I they looked so bad last week. Yeah, Broncos two weeks two weeks in a row. They look it's, so bad. It, it's going to be the screw job of the John Gruden thing because I, I, getting rid of them. I don't know how it benefits the Raiders right now. You know, I, I mean, I'm over the long term, sure, because you get rid of some of these flimsy, terrible draft picks. But right now, in the middle of the season, like this. You know what? When it starting three and zero was probably the biggest curse for that team because they lost draft position by doing that. Oh my god, I'm I'm losing you. You're like falling asleep talking about the, your Raiders here. So we, we I can't. Get, yeah, let's get. We got to get off on. the Raiders. I, Two I games can't. left. They're the I night can't. games. So the first one is our Sunday night game where we're going to be seeing the Steelers host the Seahawks. This is a snooze. 
Nobody cares about this game, especially since the Seahawks are going to be out there starting quarterback. It's going to be the Geno Smith show. Steelers favored by four and a half on in this one. It's a trifecta game, the second one of the week. The Sharps are in on them. The tickets and the money as of right now are both in on the Steelers, only slightly. Over under 42 and a half. Uh, I can't pick Geno Smith. I picked the Steelers. I wrote Pitt, and then I wrote C over it. I I, I, I went back and forth is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so what would you uh, land with? I can't read my own handwriting, so I'm just going to go with Pittsburgh. Okay, there we Minus go. Minus five. Pittsburgh. And that leaves a final game, which is the Monday night football game. The Buffalo Bills hosting the Tennessee Titans to end the week. This game in Tennessee, Titans home dogs. Spread right now five and a half in favor of the Bills. Tickets and money really early yet, and they're all in on the Bills. The Sharps have taken the Titans right now. See if that sticks. The over-under is at 54 points. I, I don't know what to do with this game. I, five and a half points is a lot of points. Upset of the week. Yeah. Oh, so you like the Titans? Yep. Wow, look at that. I ended up going with the Bills. I was going to take the Titans, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Granted, they're home, and I, I was trying to picture the game. So it's going to be Derrick Henry. He's going to run the ball, and then you know that's going to you know beat up on the defense. But, man, every time I think that, all of a sudden the Bills turn around, and they perform super good. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, five and a half is a lot of points for a road team. Um, Buffalo's secondary is much better than their front line. All right. I mean, sure, I'll give it to you. Right now, uh, Buffalo's defense still ranked number one, and it's across the board. The the total defense, pass, and rush. So Yeah, I, I get it. I, well, we've both agreed that's very skewed because of the two uh, blowout uh, 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 shutouts of sure. Miami, Miami and Houston. But, I mean, for me, this goes back to the fact that Tennessee's defense really isn't good. Right? They're, oh, they're ranked, horrible. They're ranked they're 27th, and they are bad. So you're going to, you know, sure, the Titans might be able to figure out this, that, and, and the other on offense. They could run Derrick Henry, do some ball control, but ultimately you have a crappy defense against the Bills' offense, which is actually pretty good. You know, they're ranked 12th, and they're very efficient, right, with what they do. They don't do anything spectacular. There's still some things that I, I, I think could pop. Stephon Diggs has been held in check all year, which I can't get my my brain around. I don't understand how, uh, you know, he hasn't blown up. He had 1,500 yards last year, and he's doing nothing this year. You know, uh, he, he, that's, uh, that's like the Madden curse, man. I, I I don't know what it is. He wasn't on the Madden cover, was he? I don't follow the no, Madden anymore. No, I'm I'm saying it's like the Madden. He did so good last year that he yeah, was... yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um. So anyway, 54 is the over under. You're taking the Titans. I'm taking the Bills. And if the Bills are going to cover this, I mean, if the uh, Titans are going to cover this, it's probably going to be the under. If the Bills cover, it'll probably be the over. Uh, no, I could see it both being the under. I, you know, I, I don't know. You know, Titans. I could see the Bills scoring points and the Titans' offense just not hit. I don't. I don't know. Fifty fourth again. Fifty four is a lot of points. I like, love. I it love is the Tennessee. second most points this week, only behind the Chiefs and the Washington Football Team. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I just. I think that. I think Buffalo's defense is very overrated. I think Tennessee's offense is very underrated. With Julio Jones is old. He's very old. He's always shot. But, shot. But he he's shot. But he still commands targets. And he still commands coverage. Because he will chew you up still if he's not covered. So All right. I mean we'll we we are gonna find out. We're on opposite side we're on opposite sides of a bunch of games this week. So This is gonna be a squeaky wheel game for Ryan Tannehill and his passing offense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Now, now I'm actually having more interest in this game talking about it than I did before. I, I had no interest in that game, but I'm uh, actually now we're talking about it. I'm kind of into it. Uh, I'll, I'll be into that. Let's see what happens on that Monday night game. See if Tannehill and Henry can uh, get the upset victory here at home. So that uh, wraps up all of our picks. We will finish her off as we always do. Fourth down. And that is with our gambling. 
So we start off with our super picks. I will start off this week. Last week you were five and zero. I was two and three. So I'm looking to make a little bit of a comeback here. Like I said, I have been in the toilet with my super picks at seven and eighteen, twenty eight percent. I mean, it can't get much worse. So I am going to take the Rams against the Giants. Yes, it was a lot of points at ten points. I don't care. The Giants' defense is terrible. I'm taking the Chargers there on the road versus the Ravens. I'm taking the Bengals. I am taking the Packers and the Steelers. So those are my five picks. I know that you are taking the Bengals already. So what are the other four teams that you are going to pick? So uh, I wrote Kansas City, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a little hesitant on it, but I really think they're going to smoke them. I really, really, really think they're going to crush them. Okay. Uh, Do you want to like go the with Charger. them then? Yeah. I like the Chargers, I like the Bengals, I like the Packers, and I like the Browns. Packers, Browns, and like we said, Kansas City. So, I mean, for me and you, we have at least two teams, three teams that are the same in the Packers, Chargers, and the Bengals for our super picks. So then our over-unders. I had already noted the two games that I was going to take. I The Colts-Texans, I'm taking the over 43, and the Cowboys-Pats, I'm taking under 51. Which two games are you going to take? I'm going to take the Miami-Jacksonville over 47. Okay. I just think those both those defenses are horrible. Sure, I get I it. I think their just, offenses I, are bad too, which is I do too. But I I, I think it's just going to be like a it's just going to be really it's going to be a shootout. Uh, and I like the Chargers Ravens over fifty one and a half. The Chargers Ravens over. That's right. You were mentioning that before. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Again, it's a lot of points, but uh, you know, I can see it. I'll see it. Uh, so there you have it, our over-unders, our super contest. That brings us to our survivor and knockouts. Last week, I whiffed taking the bills on my knockout, uh, and but I hit on the Vikings, as did you. So this week, I have the Broncos available and for the survivor pick, and I am going to take them. They were the only game I really looked, and I said the Raiders are on the ropes here. They're definitely, I, I, I you know, I don't even think three and a half is going to be close enough. I, maybe I'm wrong, and they turn it around, and they, I don't know, win one for John or win one against John. I don't know how you spin it, but I'm taking the Broncos for my survivor pick. Ooh, really? Yeah. That's a bold... I'm going to take Cincinnati for my survivor. Okay, on the road versus the Lions. I, I I looked at Cincy. The only thing is that the Lions, they just scare me, right? Because it's like one of these games they're actually going to win. And it's going to be the game that I picked the other team. So I stayed away <laughs> from it here. So you went with Cincinnati, but I was looking at them. So I could, I could see that pick for sure. Yeah, and then my knockout, I'm going to go with the Patriots. You're going with the Patriots. They are playing the Cowboys at home. Uh, I just took the opposite side of the Bronco game. So I did the Raiders. So that game, I, I just, I, I was, now's a good time to get the Raiders out of there because, I don't know, maybe they look better down the road and they piece it to, you know, so if I can get them out, I'll take them here. And I did because I picked the Broncos on the other side. Uh, so, you know what? I, I'm totally rethinking this Cowboy thing now. I thought that game was in Dallas. That game's in New England. Game's in New England. I said that Foxborough. I know. I'm. I'm just. I'm. 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 I don't know. That's going to be a tougher game than I thought. That is, I said that is going <laughs> to well, be a tougher game. Than I we're we're an hour and twenty minutes into a podcast, so you're going to have to think about that uh, after the fact. Yeah, I'm going to have to see how that how that plays out during the week because that that's that's a little scary. But let's do this. Go. Okay, so that's it for all of our ancillary picks. Now let's get to the cashola. So like I said, you're, you've you got almost 3300 bucks in the bank. I've got about 500 I just went with one game again this week, so I will start off. I am doing a two-team tease again. I am going to take 300 and put it on this tease. Hopefully they come through here. I'm taking the Rams. I'm bringing them down to three-point favorite in New York. I can't see how the Giants... 
don't lose that game, and now the Rams only got to get a field goal. Uh, granted, it, it, it's a shitty tease because it brings it down. Actually, it's four points, right? So it was, they favored by 10. The six point brings it to four. So I don't even get to the field goal, but I don't care. I just want the Rams and less points. And then I ended up taking the Bills. So I like the Bills against the Titans. So I am going to actually swing them and just make it a half point in favor of the Titans. So the Bills just have to win on the road. Talking to you right now, there's probably other games I should have done, but that's what I did, and I am sticking to it. All right. All right. I so like, that's you. Uh, you got, you got I, more money, so you get to play around more so than I do. I really don't like this week that much, and I'm I'm – I'm going to do my, my prototypical $50 money line parlay mixed with the $100 tees. So for my $50 money line, I'm going to do the Chargers at plus 130. Okay. I'm going to take Cincinnati at minus 180. Yeah, you I really like, like Cincy. The, I don't like that half a point, though. Like, I, 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 I you know, I, I just, I think Cincinnati is going to win, but I can see him winning by a field goal. Um, and then I'm going to take Tennessee. To win outright at plus two hundred five, oh. and uh, not knock off Buffalo. Going against me. Okay, gotcha. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So that's all you're so doing that, this week? No way. No, 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 no. That's fifty to win. That's fifty to win. Uh, uh, what was it? Five. I think it was five fifty or five seventy. Okay. And then I'm gonna take those three, and I'm gonna add the Packers and do a hundred dollar tease. To win 360. So that's the Chargers at plus nine. Yeah. That's that's Cincinnati getting two and a half. Sure. That's Tennessee plus 11 and a half. Yeah, that's, that's a nice line there, getting the Tennessee up to over 10. Yeah. And and the Packers at plus one and a half, essentially just. Yeah, you just want them to win. Could, yeah, you just want them to win. So that's my $100 tees, $1,400 tees. And then the the other bet I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a hundred flat on the Browns over the Cardinals. Yeah, well, we both like the Browns in that one. You really like the Browns if you're gonna put a hundred on them. So, but I get it. Yeah, I, I mean, of, of all the games though, hundred bucks on the Browns though. I mean, you're gonna go a straight bet. You're gonna go with them over some of these other ones, I guess. Well, I mean, they're, they're, you, you're right. I mean, we talked about it. There's just shitty games this week. It's shitty games. They're really, really not. There isn't too many games I'm super confident about at all. No. It's more of it's way more of a teaser week than it is a, a parlay or a money line parlay or a spread week. It's just it's so much easier to tease the, all these games. Yeah, I'm surprised. Like, I, I know that you picked the Steelers, but I'm surprised you didn't throw the Seahawks in some of your money line stuff. I wanted to. I erased them. I wrote them and erased them. Yeah, I, I just thought that the Geno Smith factor scares people off. It makes the spread four and a half, but they do have DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. He's just going to throw the ball downfield. The Steelers stink. You know, Roethlisberger is old. So that's an upset special there that has Chris Eggie written all over him. But he, here it is. They are not anywhere to be found on your betting slip. Well, as of October 15th, which is Friday, it's legal to sports to bet on sports in Florida, but there's nowhere to do it. Oh well, by that, the way. that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't work out at all. That's uh, but we're, uh, too bad. we're in a step in the right direction to uh, get thoroughly into this even more. All right, so there you have it. Unless I have heard differently, I think that's it for your bets. Correct. That's it. Yep. All right. So there we go. Week it's, uh, week five. In, no, week six in the books. Week six in the book. Well, not technically in the books. That'll happen on uh, Monday Monday night or I guess whatever, Tuesday morning, whenever uh, the Monday night game wraps up, which usually is Monday night unless they go into overtime. But So we have a little while. So we haven't necessarily wrapped up week six, but we have in regards to our gambling podcast so all the best to all of you. Good luck with wherever you lay your money. Chris, I wish you nothing but the best, but in regards to this gambling, nothing but the worst because I've got to catch up here some way, shape, or form. This is fucking ridiculous. I can't just, uh, I can't lose week after week, year after year. It's too much. I, 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 I got to get back in it here. I got to do something. 
I need to you, win. You, you, you'll make it back one day. Yeah, sure, one day. What is going on at your house? Is that your dog? I, it's just, no, it's them <laughs> being them. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm That's out. You're I out. Know. Oh, and yeah. as we punch out, it is the great... Booker's all over his face. <laughs> Christian John, naked, just right. letting the PP fly no. on the FaceTime call. Thanks yeah, he's need, fully naked. Yeah, need all that. He is definitely probably going to hit. Eggy. Yeah, he is going to hit the camera from afar. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, all right, uh, peace out. We're, we're done talking about baby peepees and uh, our gambling for the week. Peace all out. All right, we'll adios. Talk to you later. All right, adios.